All right, so yesterday I showed you a bag that I'm planning on putting all of this gear in. I have unpacked it from the old bag. We're going to bring out the new bag, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. We're going to go through each little section of stuff, and I'm going to explain to you what I've changed or what I'll be changing when we come back. All right, so this video doesn't take like two days to do, or at least 40 minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each section, show you what, uh, what I've done to it, what I'm doing to it, if I'm doing anything to it, and pack it in the bag off, off screen so you don't have to sit here and watch me put it in the bag and change it around a million times. So yesterday I showed you that Arkenseal um, 75 to 80 liter expandable backpack. Um, I played around with it a little more last night and a little more uh, today, and I figured it's time to pack this stuff in here. So we're going to start off with what's in, all the way in the back, of course. <laughs> Silly of me to put it back there. We have our Alps Mountaineering Backpackers tent. We have our, um, over here, this is a uh, military uh, sleeping bag without any liner in it. We do have a whoopee here, a little blanket, military blanket. So if it does get cold, this will be able to be used over it. Um, and we have my blow-up pad here, my sleeping pad. So I've reviewed all this stuff in the past. If you look through my videos, you'll see uh, all the reviews on it. So those are the first things. Nothing's changing on that stuff. It's going in the bag. That way, if I am called out in an emergency or if I have to run from home in an emergency and I have to pack, pack up somewhere and just basically set up camp, I can. So I'm going to put that in the bag and bring you back to the next section. All right, on top of this huge pile of stuff is my water bladder. And, you know, I've debated carrying this in the bag. Again, there is no setup in the bag to hold the bladder. There also is no hole to stick the thing through so I'm kind of opting towards carrying something else now I always keep five gallons of water in my vehicle at any given time I could add another 30 or 40 gallons if I really needed to I've got lots of bottled water tucked away everywhere ready to go so if I'm called out in an emergency grab my radios grab this bag and I'm, I'm gonna ditch the bladder and I think I'm going to go with if I have to hike in any way I think I'm going to go with this. And you guys, back over the summer, saw me review this. This is the, uh, what is this, the three, the two quart US flexible canteen. Inside here, the reason it's kind of a little funky, is the same idea as a bladder. This piece here screws on top. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. This piece here inside screws on top, and it has a tube, a drinking tube. So if I really want to carry water with me, if I have to leave my base camp for whatever reason, um, I've got this with me with water in it and um, it's really ready to go. I'll just keep it near it. I'm not gonna put it inside the bag, but I'll keep it near it and ready to go. That's what I'm gonna do for water for now, in uh, you know near the bag, nothing in the bag, but near the bag. So that doesn't even need to go in there. So we'll just move right on to the next thing, which is the fire kit. We have the things that I have here. Now I don't have a big extensive fire kit here. I almost always carry a lighter, but I do have a bunch of random loose things here. So. I've decided to think about what I really want to carry with me. Now, first off, of course, I want to carry my Faro, the Uber Leading Faro Rod, and the Striker. I'm not totally sold on the Striker because I don't like the ridges it makes with the teeth, but I'll probably use the back of a knife. So I probably will get rid of the, the Striker at least. I'll keep the, um, the lanyard, but I'll probably get rid of the Striker to save some weight. Uh, really, I just I use the back of a knife, I always have, and I probably always will. So. We'll probably be doing that. But, let's show the rest of the stuff here. I have a char cloth tin that I also have lots of tinder in, some char cloth. I have some dryer lint in it. I'm gonna keep that. And I think I'm gonna really get rid of the rest of this stuff. This is some treated jute twine. This is black and white fire starter. This stuff is awesome. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm saying it's just extra weight. When I already have a tinder, I don't need to have 20 tinders. So I may keep these because these are cool, the, fu the fire fuzz, and they wear next to nothing. Black and white fire starter fire fuzz. So I'll probably keep those. This is just an extra tab, um, an esbit tab. This is the military trioxane, actually. Don't need that. And I don't need this, really. Even though this is really good stuff, I've already got a bunch of fire starters. This is where the problem is when you have a bag and you start just, oh, I'll put that in there. Yeah, that'd be handy in there. The next thing you know, you got 50 of one thing you don't need. So those probably won't be going. These are my UCL matches. 
And they will definitely be going with me. And I have some cotton up there so they don't strike on anything. Because matches come in handy even when you're lighter, your ferro rod, you know, everything fails, matches will work. So, all that has pretty much come down to that. And that I can stick in a small Ziploc bag and keep on the side of my, uh, my kit. So we're just going to toss that in there for now. Get it out of the way. I'll remove that striker after off camera. But that's a whole lot less stuff than what I had in there to start with. So let's move on to the next section. All right, so next up is the electronics. Now, I do have my bag over there, my box, my ammo can that's got the solar panels um, and my stuff ready to deploy over there, the radio, which is pre-programmed, my antennas. That's all ready to go. But there will be other electronics that I take and I want to have in this bag so I don't have to think about it. One of which is a little shortwave radio. This is a Texan I picked up a while back. I do not keep batteries in it because it has a radio, a, a clock on it, and it'll eat the, eat the batteries. But it's kind of handy to have. So I have that. And I have a bunch of batteries. Now, time to rotate these batteries. And I don't even have anything in here that uses the AAAs anymore. So why these were in here? Don't know. So what we're going to do, move that stuff out of the way. Cut this pack down. I usually cut off the top. And get those in there. They're rotated. Alright, so next up, getting rid of a lot of weight in here. I have my headlamp, which is the Olight Power. And I put that in there right after I did the review on it. It is locked out right now. I have it open. But that is an awesome headlight, really, really bright. So that will be going in there. And I had a Nightcore. What is this again? Which one is this? MT2A. Now, I love this flashlight. There is nothing wrong with this flashlight. But it doesn't have a common charger to the parent. So what I did was, I think I'm going to be getting rid of this. Keep that charger in there. I don't know if you can see it in there. See the red? Keep that charger. And instead... Put my Olight Seeker 2 in there. That way I have two common end cap charging flashlights. I don't have to worry about that at all. This is ever so slightly heavier than this. Not really much. But this uses double A's. Why would I want to carry more double A's? That's enough for the radio. That's it. So, this will be our light system. And these are an antenna for the radio. The white cord there with a clip on it. You know, just clip on it, throw it up in a tree. Charging cord there. USB charger for my phone. And a USB um, charger for the, um, over here, sorry. That's for Baofeng batteries. I have another one for my VX7. So I just keep one or the other in there at all times. And I always have a bunch of extra batteries too. So that's the electronics section. It's been shrunk down a little bit. We got rid of some, some older batteries there. So I'll use those up. And uh, that will get packed in. Now instead of, this is going to go on the sides. These two are going to go on the sides. But this stuff here, I'm just going to put in a Ziploc bag. I had that in something that was very heavy. I'm going to bring it out over here for you. This thing. And it's just more weight. This thing is heavy. Why bother with it? So I'm just going to stick it in a Ziploc. Um, a good thick Ziploc, not a junk one. And uh, that section's done. Let's move on to the next section. Alright, so the next section is really three things, but all kind of goes together, I guess you could kind of say. Um, I have my knives. I have gloves here, and I have my water filter. I reviewed this water filter a while back. This is a really, really good one. It's a ceramic Survivor Mate water filter. If you search for Survivor Mate on my YouTube channel, you will see. <clears throat> Basically, this uh, turns, pumps up, and it's got ceramic filters inside. There's your pump side, this, this side here. And over here, you have your pre-filter and your ceramic part here. So this is a really good filter. A little bit better than a, uh, you know one of those little Sawyer squeeze mini type things. And uh, for the water that I may find out here in the wild, I definitely want something like that. It does have the pre-filters and the little bobbers that you put on them to float. Um, this is your cabling, cabling uh, tube that connects to here when you pump, connects to the bottom. So that is your filter. I did throw in an extra thing of water, uh, water filter. Uh, water, water purification tablets, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think three steps ahead. Okay, so the knives. Now, some people might say this is kind of excessive, but I do have two maintenance tools here. And that's just a very basic Camillus, you know, ceramic sharpener. It's got all this other stuff and the pull-throughs. I would not use those. I'd probably just use the ceramic. And I do have a strap I made myself. 
You'll see I also added a little bit of that green compound from the other day. Um, and this is just a tiny strop, you know, just small enough to say, if I want to touch this knife up after using it, I could just strop it like that, back and forth. Real easy to use. That's handy to have, especially since you're not going to be putting new edges on these things out in the field. Something like this and like this can really maintain them. This is, if you haven't seen it before, this is the Buck 632. They were selling these at Walmart for a while. It was a very nice knife. I believe they were like 40 bucks. They really were not all that expensive. Very nicely made. Very comfortable in the hand. Nice grips on it. So, definitely a, a good budget knife. Got ever so slight recurve in there, but not too bad. I'm not a big fan of super recurve blades because they're impossible to sharpen. I'm just lazy about that. But anyway, that's the, that's the main one. I do have a Mora. This is the... Uh, the high carbon steel mora. Basically, I just put some black, uh, black bluing, bluing on it, and that's just for smaller camp tasks. This stuff I've batoned wood with. I beat the heck out of that knife, and it still works perfectly. Um, pretty decent knife. This is more for eating. So this is probably going to go on my eating utensils. This is an open L I modified and stained. Um, I modified it by digging that little hole out there, so I could reach in there better. And then again, I blued the blade with a little cold bluing. So this is really more of a dinner food prep utensil. So I'm probably going to stick it in with the uh, the food kit that's over here. And I'll show you that in a minute. This is the Open L number 8. Very nice knife. So it's probably going to go in that kit over there. But, of course, my Baco Laplander. Can't beat this. These are probably some of the best hand saws out there. I know people like the Silkies, but I really like these Baco Laplanders. So... That's that part of the kit. I am placing this stuff, the filter, and the pre-filters and all that in the bag. This is just going to go inside the bag itself with the work gloves, and we're good to go. Let's move on to the next section. All right, so now we're moving on to the cooking and that kind of stuff. Um, we'll start off with this guy first. This is the Luxata Titanium Wood Stove. I've reviewed this. You've seen it before. Super ultra light, real easy to carry. Um, the reason I have a wood stove, and I have some butane there, or isobutane, I should say, we already went over this, this is going in there, is because I also have a butane stove inside this titanium pot. Now, I know I have a lot of stuff in here, and it seems like, well, gee, you're saving weight in a pot, <laughs> but it, it adds up, trust me. This is the Snow Peak. There you go. It's the pot and pan cook set. And there is the little uh, burner that I put in here. I have two of those. I keep one in here. Um, I do have a gas in here and an extra one. Reason being is I like having extras. It doesn't add that much weight. It's, I don't know, 9, uh, 7.7 ounces. So yeah, it's heavy. But again, this is primarily going to be something in my vehicle um, that I'm driving to an incident with. Now, if you have this kit or any of these Snow Peak kits, it seems that these lids never seem to fit off. They're constantly falling off, you know? What I did was I took the edge here. See that little dimple? Put a little piece of wood under there. I took a perfectly round punch and tapped it once. Did the same in the back. So now I have two nice dimples and it kind of snaps on there. So it's a little bit better. Of course, it, of course it's going to fall off when I'm showing it to you on camera. <laughs> So it kind of keeps it on there a little bit better. A little more secure. It isn't constantly popping off, you know. Seems to... You have to snap it off to get it off there. You do have to push down to make sure it's on there. But once it's on there, it's on there good. So that's the cook kit. And the cooking stuff. I do have foreign MREs, um, titanium spork in here that I've added some color to with some heat. Kind of heat annealed it. Made it look kind of cool. Just take a blowtorch and heat it up, and it gets all these funky colors on it. But you can still see it's as far in MRE. Don't forget to check those guys out. They have lots of good videos. So that's it. That's it for cooking. Really, none of that's changing. i got a way to keep a, a fire going in case I run out of gas. Again, I have my knife, my fork and spoon right there. And I have my cook kit. Really not much I can't make in this cook kit. Let's move on to the next section. There is one thing I did forget to show you. And this old crummy Walmart paracord. We're getting rid of it. Much better paracord, uh, neatly stored, nice and thin, 
that's going in the bag. All right, three items really quick because this video is getting long and I don't want to bore you guys to death. I have another pair of socks out here. I don't know where they went. They are probably on the floor back there. So I'm going to keep two pairs of socks. We are going to wrap these up. Um, I have the uh, dryer out here, the vacuum sealer out here to seal them up. I do have a pillow. This is a camp pillow. Yeah, I know. I'm really roughing it. <laughs> you blow it up, you got a camp pillow. It's just something to add, make it a little more comfortable. We do have a 15 watt solar panel. And inside this solar panel, I have another charger with a panel on it itself. So, I figure it can't hurt to have a little extra in there. The panel can charge that up all day and that can charge stuff up all night. Or I can charge up my flashlights with it, whatever. Um, it does have two inputs on this. This is an e-scene two panel thing here. You'll notice I just put the carabiners on here instead of carrying a bunch of carabiners in my bag loose. Hang it up. Let it sit out there. You're good to go. So, those are three things that are going to go in the bag. Um, this is going to go inside the main compartment, whereas the other stuff's going to stay out in front. My tools and stuff where I can grab at it and get it real quick. Alright, we're getting close towards the end, but would you look at this sorry mishmash of crazy light sticks here? <laughs> I don't even know. I think this one is a, is a dollar store light stick. It's got to be pretty old. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, it is, because it's got that ribbon in it, that lanyard. Well, I'm glad I checked that thing. Let's see. Is it lighting a little? Yeah. I'll hit the other light just to make sure. It's totally dead light stick. Oh, there's a little bit of light coming off it, but not much. So, today's lesson is rotate your stuff more often. These guys are out of here. We got three new nice ones that are going to go up front with the rest of my tools that I need to grow, look, grab and go right away with. So, that part's done. Let's move on to the last few sections here before I lose my mind doing all this. <laughs> all right, so I've got nine, um, actually, ten different meals in here that are freeze dried. I figure that's about 20 cups of coffee, uh, cups of water. Wow, I'll tell you where mine, my mind's at this morning. It's <laughs> 20 cups of water. So, again, you got to remember water. Um, I do have my, my bladder here. And that's not going to be all the water I'm going out into the field with. Uh, if I know for a fact, okay, if I'm leaving my house on foot and I'm not able to carry anything but this backpack and that bladder, I'm definitely taking some more water in my bag. I may even stick the, uh, the uh, Camelback back in the bag, okay? That's just, just for those that are concerned that I'm taking freeze-dried and don't have enough water in it. Speaking of coffee, okay, I got a Bridgeford uh, cinnamon bun in there. got some, I think I have a pizza in, oh, the pizza's in there, a little slice of pizza. Got some Propel, some Gatorade, um, lots of uh, coffee, a couple of snacks in here, some uh, hot sauce, pretty much just kind of a sides, and meals. That's all I'm taking as far as meals go. Remember, this isn't for the end of the world. This is more for a short-term deployment, say, three days. You know, um, And basically, most bug-out bags should be a solution for three days to a week at the most to get you where you're going or to get you away from a problem. Um, if you think you're going to strap on the biggest of bags and go out into the wilderness and live on your own if you've never done it before, you're going to head into some serious trouble. So do yourself a favor. Set your bug-out bags up to be something that's very short-term. They are to bug out. They're to get you away from a problem and into somewhere else where you're going, not bug out and live in the wild until the whole problem blows over a year later. That's really what I want to emphasize on that so you guys don't think that this is a solution. And before you do any bugging out bagging any preparation for that, get your house in order first. Get your preps at home done right. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not bugging out anywhere. You're going to be bugging in at home. So, just wanted to give you that information with the, with the food here. I also always have a car kit with a ton more resources in it. So, if I'm going out by car and tossing this kit that I'm going to be showing you in a minute in the back, I'm good for at least two weeks to three weeks. I mean, I have a lot of stuff in the car. It's in one of those paratrooper carry-on type bags, so there's a lot of supplies in there. Anyway, that's the food. We're going to toss that in there and finish up with the first aid and kind of health and beauty section, or at least the uh, toiletries. All right, so this is the stuff that was just kind of floating around loose in my first aid section of this bag. Um, this is my first aid kit. Kind of unconventional, but you know what? There's a lot of stuff in there, and it's all pretty darn good, packed in there very well. Um, I am contemplating switching this heavy plastic container out for the one I told you that was heavy here. I'm thinking it might be a little bit easier to use. 
but I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to decide after I pack everything up. I'll bring you back once we're all done, but uh, I'm going to pack everything up there and see how it works. So that's going to go right on the top of everything. And I always tell people your first aid kit should be the first thing in your backpack because you're not going to need to get out and stop and cook a meal to save your life, but you might need to get some quick clot out and stop bleeding to save your life. I do have a uh, tourniquet in here as well as another compression bandage. It didn't fit in there, but that's the first aid kit. That's staying right where it is. This is all the kind of a sort of wipes and assorted, I mean, wipes and, uh, you know, stuff to take care of yourself, keep yourself clean, keep yourself dry. Um, these are really handy. I always tell people, if you got to do, the only prep I want you to do, if you're never going to do another prep, is to stick one of these in your car so when you get a flat in the rain, you can change your, uh, change your tire without getting soaked. It always seems that happens when you're dressed up to go somewhere nice. So with this stuff, we're just going to all try to put it in one container. I have a little witch hazel here. For those of you that don't know, witch hazel is an awesome sanitizer. It's great for cleaning and irrigating wounds. Um, it's really, really cool stuff. So if you can get some, get it. Definitely a handy little item. Um, I always try to keep a little bit of it in my bag. These are water wipes. These are full-size towels. You, you put water on them, and they puff up into full-size towels. I keep four of those in there. And an emergency blanket that probably should have gone in the first aid kit, but it's not going to fit, so we toss that in there. Also, too, remember this guy, the knot card, very handy. That's going in there, too, because I'm going to be putting up antennas and whatever, uh, especially with the ham radio club. We're going to be doing that kind of stuff, so you need to have a way to tie up knots that maybe are conducive to that kind of stuff. Give me a few minutes to pull everything together. And I'll show you what the bag looks like, fully packed. And i got to say, it's um, there's a lot of room in it still, so it's going to be really impressive. Hang on. i got to say, that's pretty comfortable. Yeah. All right, before I finish up, I had a subscriber yesterday ask me for a close-up on the zippers. Those are the zippers. Put them right there. I'll get a little closer for you. That's them right there. Um, I don't know the brand. I'm sure they're made in China. But i got to say, they're really, really pretty heavy-duty. Pretty decent. Let me back it up and we'll finish up this video because I know I've gone way too long. <laughs> Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did the best I could with a little bit of room that I have here to repack bags. So I don't do a lot of bug-out bag videos because mainly bug-outs should be your last option. But uh, when I do, they're kind of big and large and kind of small for my, my work area out here. But anyway, um, you get an idea, and again, this is a specialized bag. This is a bag that I would use if I was called for, say, an emergency with CERD or an emergency with the Ham Radio Club, and I was responding, and this is the bag to take care of me and my needs. Of course, I have my Ham Radio gear packed up, ready to go. Um, and again, like I tell people, you don't need a bunch of bug-out bags. You don't need three or four. A lot of people you see on YouTube, you know, we're gear reviewers, we get the stuff for free, or we get it to review, or we buy it, and it ends up being a lot of gear. So we build bags with it, or we, you know, practice with it, or play with it. Um, you, all you really need is one solid, good bug-out bag. And I wouldn't concentrate on it too much, because like I said, most of your emergencies, disasters, whatever, are going to be bugging in in your home. Please, get your stuff straightened up at home first. Get your, your food storage, your water, um, your tools, take care of any repairs your house needs. Get your, your medical in order, you know, get all that stuff taken care of before you go and spend money on a bug out bag. Because chances are 99.9% .9 of your disasters are going to be right in your home. Now, if you live in hurricane country, yeah, maybe a few more might be out of your home and you got to run. Another thing people ask me about my bug out bags is how come I don't have weapon stuff in them? Ammo, magazines all over it and everything. Well, because as much as none of us want to go to shelters and none of us want to be in any kind of government shelter or anything like that, it may happen. You may get stuck. You may have to go. The last thing I want to do is to be digging through here. Oh, where did I put that magazine? Oh, I got ammo in this side. Oh, I got a weapon attached here. All I have to do is literally go into the side pocket back here, take out my knives, and walk in with that. You know, and also, too, I have a battle belt and I have a uh, plate carrier. So as you saw with me quickly walking around in front of the camera as best I could, um... It's very comfortable. It's way more comfortable than the other one. Um, my other one down here, let me pull it up. This guy here, he's all sad and deflated now. But man, I'll tell you, the difference is night and day compared to that. That is so much more comfortable. I don't know if it has to do with the stiffer backing. 
you know, keeping it straighter on your back. I felt like I was standing up straight with it instead of the other one, which kind of felt like I was hunching. But definitely a good deal. So let me finish this up before we go too long. This has been a two-part video yesterday. I kind of just showed you the bag today. I packed it with the stuff. And again, this is all my emergency get-to gear right here in front. You know, anything I need right away. First aid kit. Uh, maybe I want to listen to the radio to hear what's going on. Maybe I need lights. I have my lights in here. Um, knives. My fire starter stuff. And the rest is all packed in here. And I even have room up here. There's a pocket up here, which I didn't even know uh, until I actually packed it. And there's room up there for something, too. So I'm probably going to put a Nevada map up in there, since that's the state I'm in. I may even um, put a bottle of water up there, you know, a canteen or something or, a, you know, something like that. Stick it up top, maybe a smaller one, just to have a little extra water because we are in the desert and as much water as I have in my vehicle, still it's always good to have more. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. This is the Arkansas expandable backpack. It starts at 70 liters and once you unzip it along here, you get an 80 liter backpack. Definitely comfortable. I got to say it's probably around 45 pounds. Again, this is not designed to be lugged on your back full-time. I can do it, um, but not everybody can. So make sure the backpack you get to start with is something you can carry. But if you're planning on bugging out by vehicle, by whatever, um, that might be handy for you. Or if you feel you can carry it. Now, for me, that was way, way lighter than the other one. But I did take some weight out of it, so it's definitely a little bit better. And uh, I will put a link down below, again, to that backpack. If you guys have any questions about any of the gear that you see, you know, like, hey, what kind of stove was that? Where did you get that? Just leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to show you where they're from in the um, in my store. I'll hunt them down for you. But I can't answer everybody if everybody does it, so I'll do my best I can do. And I thank you for watching, folks. So uh, check out our Amazon store down below if you're looking for some of the gear we've reviewed. Uh, don't forget to check out our Thrive Life down below as well. Lots of food in there for you guys to check out and try out. And don't forget to check out our Olight link as well. I really love my Olights, as you can tell. I like the uniform charging system, too. That's definitely cool. And stay safe and stay prepared.